Today I want to talk about some testing with the scan tool. Specifically, let's, uh, let's get into that whole KOEO and KOER thing that you find on Fords all the time. When you're hooking up a scan tool uh, to a Ford vehicle, and it could be any, any kind of scan tool, pretty much, except for the most generic OBD2 scan tools, any, anything that runs any kind of an enhanced mode, it's going to have, uh, if you go to read codes, you're going to find two self-tests. The, the KOEO and the KOER. And what we've got here today is a 2004 Lincoln LS that's got a check engine light on and the driver is complaining that it goes into a limpin mode and then will hardly run because he hardly gets any, any throttle opening when he pushes on the gas pedal. So anyway, we've got our, our Ford IDS scan tool hooked up and it's the Ford tool but it doesn't really matter it could be it could be any scan tool and it's going to work in a, in a very similar manner so we've got the vehicle ID'd right here you can see the the what this vehicle is I'm going to go up here to our, our tools menu and we go to self-test so that's the thing that we're we're running here is the self-test we're going to select the self-test and then we go up to, um, what am I thinking? Powertrain, of course. Engine, okay. KOER, KOEO and KOER, these are not radio stations or TV stations. They are key on engine off and key on engine running self-test. And a lot of people say, well, why can't we just get the codes? Well, we can just get the codes if we click right down here where it says uh, retrieve CMDTCs. We could do that. But the KOER and the KOEO tests really are good because it forces the vehicle to run a check on itself right at this moment. When the car's out driving around, it's the computer sees problems and it will flag those, those issues as DTCs, of course, in the computer and it will turn on a check engine light and it does all that stuff. Well, when you bring the car into the shop, if nothing if whatever caused the failure is an intermittent issue it might not act up for you right at that minute uh, not to mention the fact that you might not meet enable criteria or whatever you want to call it in order to get the computer to discover the problem but running these two tests will kind of force the computer to more thoroughly check itself out it's not just going to look for codes it's going to actually um, run some of its systems that it might not otherwise run and so key on engine off it's going to look at things that don't pertain to the actual engine running it's going to run run a test that way and and koer it will do the same kind of thing but with the engine running so it's going to look at some different things so let's go koeo first and it says you know make sure the vehicle's in park or neutral not going anywhere parking brake is on blah 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 all that stuff so we're going to click on the check mark and the key is on, of course, the engine is running. So self-test is running. It's performing the test. A lot of times you'll hear, you'll hear clicking and popping and fans coming on and other stuff coming out from under the hood. But right here, um, the, the test is just running. And you can't hear, you probably can't hear anything on the, on the microphone. Anyway, there's there's the codes that we have. So you can see there's actually a whole long list of codes and these are actually pretty normal actually for probably a bad ignition coil. But anyway, so here's, here's all the codes. Now right now, running its test, it passed. There wasn't anything that, was a, that it saw as a problem right now. These codes down here are related to um, stuff that was stored in the computer. So it didn't see anything going on right now, but there is stuff stored in the computer, freeze frame information, some pending codes. All right, so all of our codes are here, and of course with the IDS, you click on it and highlight it, and it gives you a definition and all that other stuff over here. So anyway, that's the KOEO test. Now, down here on the tabs at the bottom, you'll see there's a KOER tab that popped up. We're going to click on that one next 
and then it tells us, okay, here's what you need to do to make sure that you can run this test, blah, blah, blah. It's always best to make sure the engine on the vehicle is warmed up because it will actually set a code for uh, related to operating temperature if the engine is not warmed up. So you want to make sure you, you warm the engine up before you run this test. Either that or know enough to ignore a code related to the engine not being warmed up properly. Um, really though, just warm the engine up. It's, it's the, best, the best way to go because then the test can run fully and completely. So everything uh, looks ready to go. We click on, click on the, the check mark down in the corner and it's telling us to start the engine. Okay, so engine is running. So do not depress the throttle. Okay, that's fine. Then we click on the check mark. And self-test is running. Now it will, quite often you'll hear the engine rev up and you'll hear different things going, there it goes. Okay, so our engine is now revving. Test is in progress. There comes a fan. Okay, we have a thing over here that says we need to press and release the brake pedal, turn steering wheel one and a half turns, and cycle the overdrive cancel switch on and off. So we're gonna do any of those things that actually apply to this vehicle. So I'm gonna get down in here, and we're gonna, we're gonna push and release the brake pedal. We're going to turn the steering wheel at least half a turn and there is no overdrive off cycling button in this car so we don't worry about that some on some trucks it'll tell you to cycle the four-wheel drive switch okay we obviously don't have to worry about that either we're going to come back out here this thing is running its tests sometimes this might have to run for a minute or two so just let it do its thing Okay, it's run its test, it's checked all of its systems with the engine running, and we've come up with the same list of codes. So it's, we're, we're looking at our, all of our throttle actuator control codes. What's actually going on here is I, I think this vehicle has a bad ignition coil. It's, good. it's got the V8 in it with the coil on plug, and these things are pretty, pretty well known for failing or the ignition coils are very well known for failing. Quite often shops will recommend that, they, that the customer replace all the ignition coils once they start having problems. And it's really not a bad idea. This particular person has had this issue before. They have replaced one or two coils. They probably ought to just go through and replace all the rest. Um, or, you know, whatever. This, this car belongs to a friend of mine, so if they want to do one at a time, I suppose it's no big deal. But anyway, that's probably what we have going on. But now our tabs down here, we have the, the KOEO information and the KOER information. Of course, it's identical when I switch back and forth. But the, the scan tool leaves all that information up there. And um, those, those are the codes. So anytime you repair a problem or you fix a system that sets a code, especially if one of these tests will, will trip the code, when the test runs, um, run these tests again. They seem like a hassle, they seem like a pain, but they're, they're actually, they actually work very well. It's actually a pretty good idea to have these two tests, or to, to, to have the, you know, the computer is set up so that a scan tool can run these two tests. And like I said, it doesn't matter what kind of scan tool you're, you're using, as long as it's uh, an enhanced scan tool that will, will connect to the vehicle specifically and according to year, make, and model. Uh, those are the most important things. So anyway, that's the, the KOER and the, the KOEO self-tests uh, on any Ford product been, that's been built in, oh, for a long time.